Hi everyone, welcome to Rotterdam for NEDS 2022. NEDS is the largest defense event in the Netherlands. I am with Admiral Ari Jandevaard, the head of the Dutch Defense Material Organization. Admiral, good afternoon. Thanks for welcoming us on your booth here. Yeah, good to have you here on the NEDS exhibition. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's very good for us to have this ex exhibition again because it was uh, postponed for two years because of COVID and it's very good to have the defense industry and you, of course, here present in Rotterdam. So thank you for that. Thanks again. Can you please uh, remind our audience uh, what uh, the DMO is? Is it some kind of uh, procurement office as well as program management office like uh, NFC in the US or DGA in France? Uh, it's a bit broader, of course. We do all the uh, procurement for all the IT and material for the armed forces in the Netherlands. But we also do what we call weapon systems management. That's the life cycle management of all our material. We also got three companies within our DMO for clothing, for ammunition and for fuel. So that's also what we do. And we have got the entire IT company. So that's the uh, entire, uh, not only buying IT, but also make sure it works all day, 24 seven. That's all we do. Yeah. Only small job. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> One of the main uh, topics, uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, was of course the Walrus class uh, submarine yeah. replacement program. Can you share with us the latest with the program? I'm very happy that uh, we had a very thorough, thorough, thorough process. So, still in the plans was, because it was quite a thing, and I sometimes also see on my Twitter account that people say, you have to go fast, you have to go do this, you have to do that. Already in 2014, because before I became director of DMO, we decided we're going to put out a tender process with originally four dockyards, now reduced to three. And the original plan was um, to have also for the upcoming two years a dialogue with industry on the life cycle management of the submarine. And we also talked to countries who are already uh, doing the procurement, uh, for example Australia, they now made a different decision on the continuation of their replacement program of their Collins class submarines. Uh, but they also told us, um, you can talk a lot about life cycle management, but if you don't know exactly what will be in a new submarine, then it will be a bit of a discussion with uh, no real content. So luckily, uh, also our political leadership, our state secretary, decided we're now going to put the request for quotation out. So my team worked very hard in finalizing the concept of operation, translating it to the request for quotation to industry. That's what I did with all the knowledge we already got from the dockyards in a dialogue in the past one, one and a half, two years. Um, so that's finalized. The political discussion was after summer this year. Uh, and uh, we today, as we yesterday, the uh, stick, the IT stick with all the information, on, they get the code, uh, all three dockyards at the same time and they can open it. I think it's at four o'clock, so it's still 20 minutes to go. And then they can see what we put out to them. So then they can start to uh, preparing the answer to our request for quotation and we're expecting the answers back next year, summer 2023. And then we start to analyze what we got back and hopefully in the end of next year, the beginning of 2024, we'll have the final decision of what dockyard is going to build the replacement of the four Bolluska submarines. And that's very important because what we want to prevent to have a capability gap between the Walrus class and the new class of submarines. Admiral, what kind of new capabilities do you expect from the future submarines? Of course, all the things our present class can do it will also be in the new uh, Walrus class submarines. So, um, when we had, uh, because it was still people now, all, everyone is used that we're replacing the Walrus class submarines, but back in 20, 12, 2013, it was still a discussion if we, if we were to replace the Wallace Bell submarines. So we looked very carefully on what the submarine can do and we came to the conclusion that the capabilities of submarine can only be provided by a new submarine with the knowledge we have today. So that is bringing firepower just uh, at sea, underwater, unseen, that's uh, protecting the fleet but also be, very, be, be an offensive uh, system. It's uh, gathering intelligence, but also what we see now, you see it at the Nord Stream uh, with, uh, in the Nordics, um, what you see happening over there is protect what's at the, the sea, the bottom of the sea, and not only uh, in this case for transporting gas, but when you see, especially also in the Netherlands, we are uh, a hub where a lot of data lines from uh, the internet comes together in the Netherlands, but they also go across the sea. 
So we sometimes see all sometimes unusual things happening at sea where all the data lines are located. So you also need systems who can protect you from uh, people who want to do something with that kind of um, uh, data lines of transporting gas, electricity or whatsoever. So it's a very capable system what we think is very important to protect these kind of assets. So it's offensive, it's defensive, protecting of the fleet, um, unseen, uh, getting intelligence. Uh, a conventional submarine can come very close to uh, what we call brown water near the shores of a country where you maybe want to gather intelligence. So I think the combination makes it a very powerful and important asset uh, of the armed forces of the Netherlands and of our Navy. Last but not least regarding the submarines, uh, when do you expect them to be operational? Now what I said is, and that's why I'm very happy today that the request for quotation went out, that we have a decision uh, hopefully in the beginning of 2024. And of course uh, one dockyard will be very happy and two won't, but we have to make a decision. Uh, then the uh, contract signing will be there, of course uh, the D-letter will be sent to Parliament, approval from Parliament and when that's all there, signing of the contract and then we start detailed engineering, building of the submarine and then a building process. So we, uh, time is also a very important uh, part of the request for quotation we send out. So around 2035 we hope to have two of them already in the service with our Navy because they can replace the capability of our present Walrus class. Yeah. Very well, so that was uh, regarding uh, the important submarine program. There's another major program, the Future Frigate, yes. Anti-Submarine Warfare Frigate. What's the current status? The current status is that we are in the, the final negotiations with the companies which we uh, are going to build the, uh, the, the uh, replacement of our current uh, 2M class frigates of Belgium and the two Dutch ones. So hopefully in the end of this year we have the final agreement, we can send also the letter out to Parliament, the contract will be there and we will start the finalizing the detailed engineering and as the same story of submarines, then we start building the first ship, first ship in, uh, in service 2028 and then uh, the number two, three and four and number four will somewhere around 2030. The third uh, important and ongoing program is uh, RMCM for yeah. mine warfare. It is managed by Belgium, but yeah. Belgium what is lead nation for the replacement of the of the uh, mine counter capability, and we are lead nation for the frigates. So I think this is a very good co uh, example of cooperation within the European domain, where two countries work very closely together, uh, not only in operating ships because there's already a long. We call it Benesom, the Belgium-Netherlands cooperation. We do that in the operational part already and the maintenance part already for many, many years. But now it's the third time that we also do this in the new building programs. So it works, you could, do, you could split it up, that we would both be on the steering wheel of replacement of the mine counter capability and on the frigates. Now we said we're not going to do it. Belgium is on the lead on the mine counter capability. Of course there are Dutch people participating in the Belgian program as our Belgian uh, colleagues are participating in our program, but we're in the lead of replacing the frigates and they are in the lead of replacing the mine counter capability program. So that's work. And France now said they're going to join in. So there's also an example. We're talking a lot about European cooperation, but here it's really happening. Very important. What do you expect uh, the benefits would be from France joining the, the program? Of course, uh, economies of scale, so you've got more ships than only the ships for Belgium and the Netherlands. It's also for what we call interoperability and interchangeability. If more navies use the same platform, you can share spare parts, you can exchange crews. There are a lot of benefits which you uh, get from buying the same stuff. So, uh, And luckily, uh, because uh, in the discussion uh, there was first that Belgium wanted to ship, but wants to, of, uh, France wanted to ship, but wanted to change something. We also have examples that we buy the same stuff, but then uh, in the nation we're going to change uh, something in the platform or whatever. And that does, that does not help for being interchangeable or uh, interoperable. So here it is, again a perfect example. France said, no, 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 we're going to buy exactly the same mothership as Belgium and the Netherlands are going to buy. So very good. And uh, very briefly, uh, construction of your first in class ship is ongoing uh, in, uh, in Concarneau. For our ship, yes, yes, the Flissingen. Yeah. So we're, eager, we're desperately waiting for the ship to come in. 
Now, you, you see, it's, and it's also, I said it on Dutch television this morning, um, we did for years and years and years not, in, not investing in defense. And uh, buying new uh, ships for mine countermeasures, buying new frigates, buying new submarines, it can't be done overnight. So it's long processes. So, uh, and uh, you see it in our Navy. Uh, we have, I'm in the Navy uniform, so I'm very proud of my Navy. But we should have started a little earlier. Yeah. So now it's time to, to speed up and get the systems in. Yeah. One last point I wanted to uh, discuss with you, Admiral, uh, is uh, relating to the uh, current security uh, situation in Europe yeah. with the, the, the war in Ukraine. Did this war conflict had any kind of impact on your programs? Uh, for example, uh, the combat support ship were initially not uh, set to receive radars and weapon system, and now it looks like they, that they will. Likewise, you are upgrading the LCF uh, frigates with new weapon systems. Are the two related at all? Now, what we of course see in the Ukraine and what's happening over there, and also the things happening in the conflict in the Ukraine, we carefully look at what we're doing in the armed forces and uh, and the programs we run. I can't say that it's specifically uh, the upgrade of the air defense, because that that that's caused by the Ukraine, because that was already in our programs. But of course, we look about what's happening in the Black Sea. We're looking what happened to the, the, the Moskva. Uh, we see what threats are there. Uh, do we still have enough on our side to also have to, 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 to have uh, countermeasures against these uh, threats? Um, it's affecting, of course, the DMO because we're providing a lot of stuff to the Ukraine. This evening, I'm going back to Brussels. Tomorrow, we have the. Ukraine Defense Contact Group, but all the 30 nations within NATO to see how we can support the Ukraine in what we have, to see um, um, what's provided to the Ukraine, and that comes all from our stocks. So it's something, I would speak for the Netherlands because, um, and not speak for other countries, but we, um, we had something in place before, uh, well, the wall was still standing in Berlin. But we have to go back in our memory. What if we, if we uh, provide so much ammunition and you want to replenish your stocks, how are you going to talk to industry? How are you going to talk to industry to expand their capacity to uh, produce more ammunition so that we can replenish our stocks with all the ammunition we provided to the Ukraine? I think that's, that's really a puzzle for the Netherlands, also in NATO. Of course, we're going to support the Ukraine. I will stay um, uh, when you see the, the politicians, also my Minister of Defence, it's very important that we say that we still support the Ukraine. But we also have to look how we're going to replenish our stocks, how we get enough ammunition in, how we get new system in as quickly as possible. I think that's the biggest challenge we're having, we having now. Very well, Admiral. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much.